Hello. So in this video, we'll be um, talking about Haberman's section 4.3. Um, and the goal of the section really is to kind of describe boundary conditions um, for the wave equation. Um, and so, you know, the observation is that, well, here um, we have, right, two spatial derivatives that appear, two um, time derivatives that appear. So to have a well-defined solution to the wave equation, we, we'd expect that we would need to supply um, kind of two pieces of information about what this function is doing at the boundary, as well as two pieces of uh, information about what this function is doing right, at time zero. Okay? Um, and so in this section, we focus on kind of the boundary conditions or in practice conditions um, involving our, our value of the derivative of our function kind of at right at the boundary or prescribed points um, in the domain that we care about. Okay. So as I mentioned, two x derivatives, we expect um, two pieces of boundary information. Um, and kind of these can manifest in a number of ways. Some of them will be familiar. So what are these ways? Well, um, one way is, right, if we're saying, you know, here's a string, let it vibrate, it's going to happen. But we can say as well, the endpoints, um, we don't want those to be displaced at all. We want those to be tied down or fixed in some way. And so the mathematical condition, at least for the right um, kind of end of the string, would just be that we're saying, right, we're, we're fixing, right, kind of the displacement. We're saying at all time, Here's the displacement of the string at the say the right end. And if you wanted the left end, you'd replace this with the zero. Um, so maybe one of the ends of the string is, is tied to something, but that something can move. And so that would manifest as kind of a prescribed displacement. And mathematically, we'd write this so not as written here because right this is the same condition as fixed displacement but what this should be is um kind of the displacement of the string at the right endpoint is just going to be some function of t okay um or maybe you know um, say as an example maybe we vibrate the string and then take the right endpoint and move it up a little bit see how that changes vibrations, move it down a little bit, something like that, okay? But we're prescribing how the end of the string is moving. Another condition might be a free end boundary condition, okay? So maybe that might be something like, this isn't exactly a string, but if you have a ruler, pull it down on one end and then let it vibrate, this end is free, okay? Um, so mathematically, we treat this as um, something about the tension or the force acting on the end of the string that has to be zero. Okay. Um, okay. And so one other condition, which is similar to kind of this prescribed displacement, um, is this condition that we're going to be calling kind of this spring mass displacement. Um, and what does this look like? Well, um, we're saying the value or the, the displacement of the string, in this case, at the left endpoint, is given by some function. But this function y of t is going to satisfy some second order differential equation. Okay. Um, and so here we're saying, well, what is the displacement? How is, um, right, kind of here you might recognize Newton's law. So here we have acceleration okay, times mass is equal to the force acting on that piece of the string. And so um, there'll be a picture in a second, but what we're gonna do is essentially incorporate something like Hooke's law, okay, um, which is what was drawn there. So we have some constant, right? The spring constant. Um, and then this is the function y that appears right there, right? That's the displacement of the uh, left end of the string. 
Um, but we need to measure that displacement relative to some fixed, um, maybe frame of reference or fixed distances, something like that. And so that's where these terms, um, y sub s and l come in. And I'll say what these things are um, in the picture in a second. But for our purposes, we can think of y s and l as being given to us, as well as k. And then this function y is the unknown that we're trying to solve for. And then of course we can have whatever other forces are acting on the um, kind of on the string at that end point. Okay. Um, but I promised the picture, so here it is. Okay, so maybe we have a prescribed displacement at the right end point. Right. So here this would be right, u of l comma t is equal to zero. Um, that value right there, that height is going to be u of zero comma t. Okay. Um, and so maybe the end of the string up here is tied to block of mass, mass m, that's attached to um, a spring right there. So when our string is in equilibrium, okay, so when this isn't vibrating and it's just flat, um, here's maybe kind of where it um, where it's flat against, right? So this dashed line is the equilibrium position for the string. Um, y of t is going to be the height of the end of the string above equilibrium position. Um, L is just going to be the length of the string when it's not or uh, sorry, length of the spring when it's not stretched. And the other condition that we're going to add is, well, maybe this, um, maybe the spring isn't attached or like fixed. Maybe the end of the spring is also attached to some roller or can move up and down. And so the kind of distance from equilibrium position uh, to where the base of the spring is attached, that is going to be um, this given function y sub s. Okay. So in this picture, the main unknown is y of t, at least for this portion over here. And then the other unknowns are just the function u of t um, or u of x comma t. Okay. So L is the unstretched length of spring. Um, y of t minus y sub s is the length of the string or length of the spring. Okay. And so here we have a minus sign because as drawn, right? So this line is y equals zero. Okay. And so then where is this piece? Well, uh, what is this placement of kind of where, where the spring is attached? That's less or below equilibrium y equals zero. So y sub s is going to be, at least in this picture, some negative value. Okay. So if we want the total length of this spring, we need right whatever this displacement is, together with the magnitude of the displacement below equilibrium. Okay. Um, and so that'll be absolute value of y plus absolute value of y sub s. Or if you take into account signs, you can get the same exact quantity by subtracting off that um, y sub s. Okay. So y of t minus y sub s of t, that's the total length of the spring time t, okay. as you see it right there. And then if we want to compute right, the stretching of the spring, and see right how far from kind of equilibrium our you know, stretched or compressed spring is. Well, we need to subtract off the unstretched length of the spring, right? That was what L was. Subtract off the unstretched unstretched length of the spring from the length of the spring at time t. Um, and so then that's going to tell us the magnitude of the stretching. Um, and so, right, this right here is exactly the piece that we plugged into Hooke's law up here. 
right? Where the force acting on the displacement of a spring is proportional to the displacement of the spring. Um, and so that's why we're calling the system a spring mass displacement boundary condition. Okay. Um, so what might the other forces be um, that are relevant, right? So here, uh, so up here, this piece right here is only caring about what's happening on the spring. Right, so it's only caring about kind of this system right there. Right? Um, but we're interested in how this string is vibrating, so we also need information about this right here. Okay, and so what we'd expect is that well, this mass sure is going to be pulled down or pushed up, whatever, by um, forces acting or forces coming from the spring. But we also have forces coming from the fact that this mass is connected to this string, right? So the other forces um, in our situation, kind of, we're going to make assumptions that these are almost all of them. The other forces are going to be coming from kind of the tension or the pulling of the string, as well as a black box function that might be gravity or whatever else. Um, so as I said, so other forces, this is going to be the magnitude of the tension um, kind of right, pulling on that piece of mass, of the string. Um, but we, also, we only want the vertical component, okay? Um, so this piece right here, this whole term here is the vertical component of the force vector coming from tension string. Um, and so if theta is small, um, cosine theta is approximately one. So we get this approximation. And then um, this is approximately the tangent, right? Which is approximately the slope of the curve at that point, right? These were all these kind of physical assumptions and simplifications that physicists love to use that are convenient in the setting and that they get us the right answer. Um, but anyways, um, so right, what does this force look like? As I mentioned, um, so here's kind of a stripped down version of the picture from above. This is that force vector that's pulling on the mass as well. And uh, we just want the vertical component so this vertical component here is this term up there. Okay? But then turns out this is approximately equal to this term, which involves the derivative of u, which is a quantity we're more um, comfortable and willing to incorporate kind of in this analysis. Okay. So copying the equation from above, um, Right, mass times acceleration is equal to all the forces acting on the particle, which in this case is the mass, or that uh, block of mass, whatever that the end of the string is tied to. So here, right, we have an unknown function y, okay? Um, but this function y is kind of spe special in that this is actually kind of the, the displacement of the string at the left endpoint. So what we can do is we can plug in, right, what we want y to be or what we understand y to be, and we get something like this, right? So mass is the same, second time derivative is the same, that's that stuff right there. But now we've just written instead of y, we've written u of zero comma t, Right, which is the displacement of the string at the left endpoint. It's going to be equal to um, this expression here, where the only change again has been replacing y with u of zero comma t. 
Okay. Um, but then we also have the other forces that we're going to write like this, right? So these were the tension forces I mentioned a second ago, or that we drew on this picture right here. Okay. Um, so those forces also play in. And then finally, we have a black box for whatever other, you know, gravitational or whatever other forces might, might um, be incorporated. Okay. Um, cool. So if we assume that there are no external forces, no gravity or whatever else, or maybe there is gravity, it's just not strong enough um, to actually show up. Okay. We assume there are no other external forces. If we also assume that the mass is negligible, okay, or the mass is approximately zero, then up here, what we're going to get is this is zero. This is zero because that was zero. So this is going to go away. This is going to go away. And now we have a boundary condition, right, connecting this tension term with this spring term. So writing that out. Going to get something like this, right? Just moving things around. Okay. Notice that so up here we had a k u0 t minus y sub s minus l. This y sub s minus l. So since y sub s and l are both given to us, we're going to merge these two things into a new function that we'll call u sub e, okay. where um, the interpretation is that U sub E is the equilibrium position of the mass, right, where the string is tied to. Um, in practice, we can work with it as just being, right, the sum of um, these two terms here. Because if you plug in this up there, then you recover, you recover what we had from before. Okay. Um, but already in this form, right, notice that this is one of those kind of mixed boundary conditions, right, where we're saying we want some condition on the derivative as well as some condition on the um, function value. We want to take some linear combination of those and prescribe a value for that. Okay. Um, maybe another way to write this would be we have t0 du dx at zero t um, minus k u of zero comma t is equal to minus k u sub e of t. Okay. And so in this setup, these are unknown. Um, this, this, and this, these are known constants. Uh, that. And then finally, this piece right here is a known function. Okay. So mathematically, it's just a linear combination of derivative and function value information. Um, physically, you can interpret this as a special case of a spring mass system where um, we have negligible external forces and negligible mass. Okay. Um, okay, so playing around with this a little more. So if we assume that this equilibrium position right here, so Physically, if the equilibrium position of the mass is zero, mathematically, if we just want to ignore this thing, then what we end up with is a much simpler equation of this form. Okay, just a kind of boundary condition that can appear. Um, and so then the question is, well, all of this was written for the left endpoint. What if we look at the right endpoint, right? At x equals l. So for that, we're going to get something 
similar. Okay, so t zero du dx l comma t is equal to minus spring constant times this difference in the displacement of the string against some equilibrium position. Okay, but here notice that we have a minus. Okay, whereas up here we didn't have a minus. So the question is, well, where, where did that, where does that minus sign come from? And so if we draw the picture again, okay, so before right, we had like a mass right there and the tension was acting in that way, okay? In general, how we get this tension vector is we, right, we were taking these tangent lines, the tangent vectors um, to the string and then saying, well, that's the force, depending on which way it's pointing, left or right, we may need to um, change the sign, okay? And so that's exactly where the sign is coming from here. So the tangent vector at the right end point is this light green one, okay? But if we want, the tension, the force um, that the string is kind of having act on the mass. Well, that's a good way of writing this. So in this case, the actual tension um, that the mass feels from the string is going to be minus, I'll write it as T tilde, where T tilde is this tangent vector. Um, so that's where this kind of minus sign comes from, but you may observe, well, technically this minus sign is coming from this side and then we're rewriting it. Where generally we can go way back up to here, right? Mass times acceleration is the spring forces plus the tension forces. Um, so if we were to do this analysis at kind of L, instead of zero, this plus would be a minus, just how we compute these forces. But the same analysis goes through. Um, yeah. So this is just different kind of boundary conditions, something a little more interesting, something a little more involved than um, a lot of the boundary conditions that we've seen, seen previously. Um, but in the end, right, what we get out is a condition combining right function information as well as derivative information and mathematically we're we're fine with that um and yeah